Hey guys, if you're a PC enthusiast or if your work implies staring at a screen all day, chances are you've considered getting a second monitor. Whether it's to improve your productivity or to stop alternating between apps or simply to have your chat, stream options or anything like that while you're gaming, a second monitor can be quite useful. However, these can take a bit of space on your desk and might require a bit of rearrangement, and they can be quite pricey too depending on the size, resolution, panel type, and refresh rate. So I tried to find an option that wouldn't break the bank and be small enough that it would fit on pretty much any desk, and I've ended up ordering this 7-inch IPS touchscreen monitor from Waveshare. I know. I know, it's really small. It retails for about 85 bucks as of the time of filming, but it often goes on sale, and it definitely fits on any desk out there. So without waiting any further, let's check it out. It's mainly sold as a Raspberry Pi screen, but it works perfectly paired with Windows 10 based PCs. And it simply requires an HDMI feed and USB for power, so it's quite versatile. And it's surprising how you can benefit from this added screen real estate, although it's minor. It has a 1024 by 600 pixel resolution, which might seem small at first compared to a smartphone screen, but it's still 170 ppi, which is actually higher than a 15 inch 1080p screen, which would be 147. So it's quite impressive. Most popular websites will adjust to this resolution, so you can easily have a YouTube video playing in cinema mode there without taking any space on your main monitor, as an example. It also fits a Facebook, Twitter or Reddit feed, and you can always scale it up or down depending on how you like it. And it's just the right size for a console prompt, if you're a software dev like me. But what makes me make a whole video about it is the fact that it's so versatile. You can use the touchscreen like you would do with a Windows 10 tablet, so it could somewhat replace something like an Elgato Stream Deck if you want to control stuff at the touch of a button. You can have it laying flat or at an angle, and it can then become another input device for certain applications, while still giving you a bit of extra screen space. You can even use the whole surface as a touchpad with a built-in screen, so you can display whatever you want on it but still control your cursor with it. You can achieve that using a software called Touch Mouse Pointer, and I'll have a link down below if you're interested. It won't be as precise as a real trackpad, but it's not too far off either. And there's no physical click, but it's still quite impressive to use it as a trackpad, although it wasn't meant to do that in the first place. Windows also has a built-in virtual touchpad, but it won't take the whole screen, and you can put anything else on top for it to work. So now that you're sold on it, Let's take a look at the unboxing. So everything is well packed in the box, you get an HDMI cable, a USB cable and the monitor itself. And you do get a disc, not sure why they include that for a Raspberry Pi screen. And the HDMI cable is a bit stiff. The monitor looks great, it has a nice glass surface and has a built-in kickstand. The glass also came with a plastic protector, which leaves a flawless and smudge-free surface once you remove it and it really acts as a secondary monitor. I first tried it with my laptop by plugging both the HDMI and USB cables, and it worked as expected. It's great that they included cables with it, but since they're meant to be used with a Raspberry Pi, they're pretty short, so I bought my own ones. And I went with angled cables so that it looks better when the monitor lays on its stand. If you want to use it flat though, you might want the angle to be alongside the screen's bezels or simply straight cables. As I mentioned earlier, the screen itself has a 1024 by 600 resolution and the panel is IPS. The panel has a glass on top and there's an air gap between the two which reduces a bit the viewing angles I think, but it's still better than a lot of monitors. The default color settings are a bit weird as the darker tones are completely crushed, by default the contrast is set at 50 but I had to drop it to 0 to see what I would call a natural or neutral contrast. I left the saturation at 50 and the brightness maxed out as that's how I think it looked best. It doesn't get as bright as a regular monitor but it's enough for most well lit rooms. Again, this monitor is mostly intended as a utilitary screen and not a pro calibrated monitor and even then you get some bending on gradients that I don't get on my regular monitor. It feels like the color channels have less than the typical 8 bits of range, that could explain why the bending appears. 
It's not too distracting or anything and the overall colors still look great, but I wouldn't use it for color grading or photo editing. On the left you get all the ports. There's a headphone jack to play back what's coming from the HDMI audio channel. I haven't tried it, but I guess it would be pretty low quality considering that it's not a core feature. Then you get a mini VGA port for which you'll need an adapter, but it's not included. There's also a full-size HDMI port and two micro USB ports. Both can be used to power the monitor, but one of them also sends back touch inputs to the PC or Raspberry Pi. On the right you get all the buttons, so one for the power and the others are to navigate on the on-screen display. You get really basic color adjustments like brightness, contrast and saturation, and you can set a few other settings related to the on-screen menu. It's pretty basic, but it's enough for most use cases. I've used this monitor for the last months and I really like it. It doesn't take much space on my desk and I can have it just beside my mouse and keyboard. Having a high resolution 27 inch monitor, I can easily fit two windows side by side, but I often need a third window on site and this little guy is exactly what I need. Another 27 inch monitor would maybe be a bit too much. In fact, I have two of these at work and I don't always use all the screen space. I feel like my home setup is just enough. Now this monitor ain't perfect either, having a higher resolution panel would be great and that's totally doable considering what our phones are packing. Smaller bezels and an overall thinner case would look much better too, and maybe have some connectors at the back so that you don't see the cables when it's on its stand. Other than that, a visa mount would be cool, and removing the air gap between the glass and the panel would help with viewing angles. But other than that, this thing is quite impressive and it's really affordable, making it a nice pickup to improve pretty much any setup. It's still super portable and it would even be great as a monitor you can carry around to use with a laptop on the go. It does require two cables instead of the only USB cable you see normally on portable monitors, but having a standard size HDMI port makes it compatible with pretty much anything you have that can output video which is also really practical. So there you have it. As always, I'll have links to where you can find it in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. So hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you liked the video if you did, and if you didn't, just let me know why in the comments below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.